So there's a parable told of a, a newly crowned king and he, after the great festivities and celebration of his coronation, uh, he has kind of an, like an open house, he invites all of his subjects to come visit him if they wish. And many people come and obviously the, the elite and the rich come and uh, uh, the, the ones you'd expect to come. But there's also this homeless guy who says, sure, look, I might as well go along as well. Might be some free food. So uh, he makes his way to the castle, greeted by the guards and so on and so forth, and he's shown the way in. And uh, there's a long line of people queuing up to see the king. And the king, you can see him bowing his head and graciously speaking to the various guests, and then they move on, then they move on. And as he gets towards the front of the line, he sees that the guests are offering the king gifts, various gifts, different things. Uh, so it might maybe a manuscript or maybe some gold or maybe some food or fruit or something. Uh, so he's looking ahead going, what do I have to give him? And in his pocket he had a little bag of barley that he had been chewing on uh, on the way. So he said, well, sure, I'll give him some of that, I suppose. So he gets to the king and the king says, good day, my loyal subject. How are you today? And he says, oh, congratulations on the whole king thing. And... Uh, reaches into his pocket and just gives him a grain of barley. <laughs> and the king looks at it and says, thank you. And on he goes. And he was making his way out going, maybe, maybe I should have, I don't know. Maybe I should have given more. I don't know. Okay, whatever. So he's w walking out of the castle and reaches in to his pocket to eat some of the barley and realizes that indeed one of the corns of barley had turned to gold. And he said, why didn't I give everything? Why didn't I give him the whole bag? If I had just given everything, I wouldn't be poor anymore. And it's an interesting, it's an interesting idea for us to reflect on. Because often when we look at the faith, we look at it from a perspective of what's the minimum I have to do? Right, so don't kill people, right? Uh, be faithful to your wife if you have one. Um, just kind of be good but from the perspective of, of like you know whatever the minimum line is stay around there okay uh, we were in 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 Mount Mellory the other day a beautiful scenic Cistercian monastery not too far from us here and um, our gang were, were inside praying I was outside watching the dog and uh, this thought came to me I have one or two Easter eggs they were they were on sale there in Tesco's so I bought three and they're up in my, in my house. And I was just thinking as I was walking the dog outside, I was thinking, Janie, I'm looking forward to one of those Easter eggs now this evening. Uh, I don't have to share it with anyone because the dog can't eat it because it'll kill him and there's no one else there, so it's all for me. And the thought just came to me. What would you be willing to sacrifice knowing that you get back a hundredfold? So it's not what, you, what do you have to do. I mean, I don't have to, not, I don't, I'm not forbidden from eating an Easter egg, but if I were to make a little sacrifice of this, do I believe I would get back a hundredfold somehow in some way that some, someone might benefit from the grace or someone might be converted or touched or healed or whatever it may be through that little sacrifice? Do I believe that I get back a hundredfold of what I give to the Lord? It's his word. He says so. No one who has left mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, land, houses for my sake and for the kingdom will not receive a hundredfold. Do I believe that? Do I believe that if I, whatever I give to the Lord, I get back a hundred times? Do I believe that? Because if I do, that should really change the way I live because then it's not about just observing the minimum, but it's about what love should be. We keep giving because love doesn't count the cost. Love doesn't say, well, I think I've given you sufficient love for today. Be on your merry way. It, love wants to give more. Love wants to constantly give and, and, and show itself and not so much prove itself, but show this is real. You know, parents with their, with their kids are constantly loving on them and, and, and helping them and washing them and feeding them and helping them with their homework and bringing them here, there and everywhere. Constantly showing, showing love. That they, if they were to draw a line somewhere and say, now little child, I will only change your nappy six times today. So just be strategic about the timing of the nappy changings. Okay, that's all right. Can we have an agreement on that? No? <laughs> 
can you sign your name yet? Can I have a contract drawn up here? Like, you know, you, you don't, you don't, you can't do that with kids. You just, you just have to love them according to how they need to be loved, when they need to be loved. So, so it is with, 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 with God and us. So it is with, so it should be with us and God. Now, it's not that we identify the minimum necessary for survival, the minimum necessary for salvation, and do that. But constantly aim for, for greater, deeper, more profound expressions of love. And not just because we get back a hundredfold. That's kind of, while that's good economics, that shouldn't necessarily be our motivation either. I want to give the Lord loads because I want loads in return. <laughs> that shouldn't be it. But in terms of love, that's the, way, that's the way it works. I want to give the Lord more love to get back even, even, even more love in return because then I'll be open to his love. I'll recognize his love. I'll be accepting of his love. So we think of our, our disciples today. It's, a very, it's an interesting gospel because um, there's a, a portion of it here where, where no names are mentioned. We hear about uh, those who had escaped during the persecution, traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, but they usually proclaim the message only to Jews. We don't know who any of them are. We don't have their names. Right? They're doing incredible work here. Me, they're doing the work of the Lord, new missions in new territories. We don't even know their names. know nothing about them. They went to Antioch, where they started preaching to the Greeks, proclaiming the good news of the Lord to them as well. The Lord helped them, and a great number were converted to the Lord. So there's this huge hugely successful mission and we don't know their names why because their names aren't important it wasn't important what was important was that the mission went ahead not that people were exalted you know what I mean like it's the same for us like it, what's important is that the Lord is known and loved not that there's a plaque put up somewhere with our name on it we love the Lord we serve the Lord we aim to grow every day in deeper ever more selfless love of him and he knows all all for an audience of one. And so we ask the Lord today to help us to deepen our knowledge of him. Help us to deepen our love. And then all these hidden opportunities we have to make small little sacrifices, whether it be in food, in drink, in TV, in, during our free time, and do we throw on a YouTube video, or do we go for a walk with someone who looks a bit down, or do we pop into the oratory here, or whatever it may be. All these little things that might cause us to have to, well, sacrifice our will somewhat. Do we avail of those opportunities, believing that whatever we give to the Lord, we get back a hundredfold. Lord, open our hearts to an ever deeper, more selfless, more self-giving love of you.